We're not doing music or our normal intro segment today for the video. We're just getting right into it. I have a lot of feedback I've gotten over the last year about where people have expressed their appreciation for how we show all the successes, but also the failures here in the homestead and everything in between, all the boring stuff, the happy stuff, the fun stuff, but also some of the failures, things that have gone wrong, what doesn't work, and today's one of those days where we show you the bad side. In our last video, we told you about our pig that was not doing well, and she has only gotten worse. I have not seen her get up today. It doesn't mean she hasn't, but normally I do see her to get up and get water. Uh, she has not done that today as far as I know. She is still trying to sound off uh, to stay in communication with the other pigs, but that's about it. Uh, she's, she's definitely not well at all. If you didn't see our last video regarding what's wrong with the pig, I'll leave a link where you can click back and, and see all the symptoms and what we've been dealing with with the pig. But I just spoke with a veterinarian probably about an hour ago, finally got one on the phone, and she didn't really have any idea as to what it could be other than it sounds kind of like uh, she's having organ failure, um, organs are shutting down, that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't really... To me, it doesn't really explain what's going on with our eyes, why the conjunctivitis, the, the blindness is going on. But the veterinarian did say that she, it sounds like she is uh, suffering at this point and there's really no reason to believe since it's been so long that she's, uh, since it's been so long with her uh, having not eaten and her condition getting worse or not being able to get up. Uh, I don't know if it's paralysis setting in um, or if it's just fatigue. Either way, the veterinarian said that it's time to euthanize. One of the other potential maladies that came up as I was doing more research on this was botulism. She is expressing some of the symptoms of it with uh, some of the spasms, uh, her inability to walk now as consistent with the the paralysis symptom blindness it's a neurotoxin uh, the botulinum toxin so uh, it's kind of consistent there but the the vet dismissed that she said it'd be highly unlikely so, i don't know i read with botulism that it, the paralysis kind of starts on the back end and it seems as though her front end she's still moving her front legs but the back legs are not really responsive so again i don't know I, it's according to the vet unlikely that it's botulism my friend david has come down here to help me um, move her our plan is to first move her out of the paddock that she's in right now uh, get her away from the other pigs so when we do dispatch her they're not going to try and eat drink her blood etc that's what pigs do uh, so not knowing what the source of her malady is we don't want to spread it to the other pigs so we're going to move her back out of the paddock here um, going to shoot her and then bag her in garbage bags and get her out of here so that's the plan, what do you think? I think it'll work. All right. First, a good idea to change my hat, put on my old one, because if it gets any junk on it, any messiness, I can't wash this one, but this one goes in the washer. I think that I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, now that she's dead, we can see her eye better. You can see Yep. that it's completely clouded over. Yep. That cornea.
after I finished dealing with the hog situation yesterday evening, I found that there were a lot of comments on our video we did the day before, the sick pig dead rooster video. The timing of that went like this. Sunday is when I filmed the video sick pig dead rooster and we talked about the problems with the pig. And Tuesday was when I published that video. It was because we have internet access issues here at our home. So I had to drive to my mom's place and upload at a computer there. So there's sometimes a delay getting videos out. So I uploaded and published the video Tuesday afternoon. I had the conversation with the vet on the phone right after the video came out. And then it was about an hour, hour plus later that I started getting ready to euthanize the sow. Given the way the timing of everything worked out, I wasn't able to address any of the comments and questions I had received in the first video. After reading all these comments and questions, I wanted to film this video last night. However, I just didn't have it in me. It was a really long day. It was not a happy occasion. As many of you guys know, dealing with the dark issues of homesteading is difficult. But sometimes making a video about the issues and putting them out is even more difficult. It's it's hard to share the darker moments sometimes. But I feel really compelled still to press on and share the ugly with you guys as well. I think it's really important. It's a really important part of the journey to share that and not just the good times. With that said, the two most frequent comments I got were in regards to calling a vet as well as removing the sow from the rest of the sounder. Pull her out so she's not exposing the others to potential pathogens. Starting off regarding the issue with the vet, it's really hard as a small-scale homesteader to get the attention of a veterinarian. In our area, there are very few vets. Most of the vets that are available are for horses. If I had a horse ranch, it would be no problem getting a vet here. The vets that deal with sheep and pigs and the smaller livestock are very few and far between, and we're not in a highly populated area. We're in rural North Idaho here, so the population density isn't high. There's not a huge market here for lots of vets, so it's a very limited selection. By the time the sow's condition got bad enough for me to feel like, okay, we need some medical intervention here, or at least someone to come in and make a diagnosis, um, it was already too late at that point. But as I said in my last video, I did make the call. I made a phone call and I left a voicemail. I did also get a few comments about packing the pig up and taking her to a vet. We don't have a place like that around here. The only vet facilities are for cats and dogs, you know, household pets. There are, there are no places where I can take a pig that's going to get treatment around here. I received a ton of comments regarding moving the sow out of the paddock away from the other pigs. Absolutely, that would have been the best practice in this scenario. The reason why I didn't do it is she had been in there for a while before things got really funky with her and I figured if she has something funky that she can give to the other pig, she's already given it to them, she's still using the waterer and all that. I had already waited too long, I guess, at that point for it to make sense for me to do that. When she first started showing symptoms, I didn't really think it was that big of a problem. I just thought she might not feel well for a couple days and then she'd be back on her feet and be fine and that just didn't happen. Had I realized the severity of the problem sooner, I would have moved her, but again, by the time I realized the severity, she'd already been in there too long. It didn't really matter anyway at that point. It was a hard day. I'm definitely getting some lessons out of it. One, check the pig water every day, which I've been doing ever since. I check it every day to make sure we don't have the loss of water like that. Again, because salt poisoning could still have been what caused this. I don't think I'll ever know what it was for sure, but 
that's a possibility. So I check the water every day now instead of every other day. And two, if I have a pig that starts showing any symptoms of a problem, just not eating vigorously like you'd expect to see from a pig, just that alone, perhaps that's grounds to quarantine the pig. So whatever problem she's having, she won't spread to the others. And lastly, burying the pig. I should have buried her, I did not. My original plan was I was gonna put her in the truck and then drive her to the back of our property and bury her back there. It was getting late and I'm by myself with my son being short on time with still a long evening of chores ahead of me and domestic responsibilities as well. I took her to the waste transfer station. Ultimately, that took this situation from a huge waste to a complete waste. I think the only thing I could have salvaged out of this would have been to have buried her on the property where at least her body would break down into the soil and, you know, and fertilize the microbial life in the soil. Instead, I have a regret by how I handled the disposal. But again, lessons learned. This is one huge learning experience. I'm glad to know the pig isn't suffering anymore. The correct decision, the ethical decision was made and she's not suffering anymore.